Okay, I just finished doing the input shaft clearancing, bearing clearancing procedure. Uh, it was kind of a long-winded operation because I didn't have the right shim. So uh, what I've done is I took a shim that was about 11 thousandths of an inch too thick. Yeah, that small. And I took a uh, stone, so it's a sharpening stone for knives, and basically I just sat, I got some 400 grit paper and sat the uh, the ring on it. You can see the little ring marks on it, and I did this for like an hour. And I shaved, I managed after all that work to get about four or five thousandths off of that shim, and it put me exactly at the very tightest end of the tolerance that the Bentley gives me. And I'm going with that little note that says uh, minimum bearing plays for ten thousandths of an inch, which is, I mean, I could breathe on it and make it move that much, you know, it's, it's not that much. And uh, the note says if the bearing play cannot be measured, but there is perceptible input shaft play and the input shaft turns freely, the adjustment is acceptable. So I'm interpreting that to mean Volkswagen ideally wants this to have no play at all, but still rotating freely. So that's what, that's what I've taken away from the Bentley manual. So I'm gonna call that rotating freely. And I can't feel any perceptible movement in the shaft, but it's, it's within several ten thousandths of an inch of moving around so I'm like right on the edge of that tolerance line and I want to build this transmission to last a long time I know the factory uses tolerances uh, because they're, you know, they're they're making money they just want to get cars out the door get people to buy them maybe they'll last two hundred thousand miles who knows they don't care as long as they sell their shit but I want this thing to last a long time so I'm going to the very tightest of all the clearances that they give me and this, I think this is probably an important one to have clearance tight. Uh, mainly because the tighter you get it, you know, the case will expand as it heats and it'll let that bearing flop around in there. And I, I want it to flop around as little as possible. So I put it super tight tolerance. And I highly recommend you do the same thing. And instead of using a dial indicator or, or a dial caliper or a micrometer caliper, you know, digi, digical, highly recommend finding one of these. Get you a an old school Starrett or a Brown and Sharp or eh, anything that you can calibrate, anything that has a calibration block on it. And if you don't know how to use this, look it up on YouTube. They're not hard. Uh, it's surprising how many people are in this business or hobby and they don't know how to use a micrometer. So use your micrometer, get that thing dialed. Okay, now I'm setting the preload on the differential. And uh, the lighting's getting a little weird, so I had to shut my garage door, and I don't really have good lights in here. So you're just going to have to deal with it. You can see what I'm doing, though. So what I've done is I have done what the Bentley told me to do, and it told me to install both bearing outer races into each side of the, you know, each part of the case, and with no shims. So we're at zero shims. So we're going to check how much play the differential has with no shims. And I've gone ahead and uh, bolted the case together like it told me to do. And I got it at this, uh, I got it up real close. So you can't really see what I'm doing, but I'm, I'm actually reaching up underneath it with my fingers and pushing up on the differential. And I've got my dial indicator mounted to a really kind of elaborate contraption that's bolted to the side of the transmission. But it works, you know, you gotta improvise. So let's go ahead and do it. It's got a little bit of preload on it right now. So I'm gonna see how far the indicator moves. And the Bentley said to not rotate the differential because apparently that'll settle the bearings and that's not the right kind of measurement. So right now the dial indicator is sitting at 88. Let's see how far it moves. All right, move to 40, settled back to 89. That is exactly 51, so it's 0.51. That's my first one. And where I work, I work in nuclear plants. We always do averages whenever we're doing clearances. 
that moved to 41 again, came back to 89. So that's about 52. Now it moved to 43, settled back to 88. That's 55. I'm gonna keep going. Just so we're averaging about 54. I'm gonna call it 0.54 millimeters. So I come over to the book and it tells me to add the uh, constant preload value, which is 0.4, to whatever I just got. So 0.54 plus 0.4 is 0.94, and apparently that's the shim thickness I need. And I don't have any shims other than what I pulled out of my extra cases. Uh, the one that came out of this case is a 0.78, and I need a 0.94. So I'm going to have to pull some other cases apart and see if I can find a shim that fits. So after further refining my measurements, uh, I decided to ditch the digital caliper and start using a micrometer because these measurements are really small. Anyway, uh, I went ahead and averaged it out again on the differential. Came up with uh, a needed shim. Yeah, traffic's really loud here sometimes. Um, the shim needed was 0.95 millimeters. So I went and busted a couple cases apart, found one shim that was 0.85, and then this one, it mic'd out with my or with my digital caliper it came out to a little over 1.0 millimeters but i don't know man that, the resolution on my digical isn't that good it's a mighty toyo but i don't know it usually doesn't let me down but i went ahead and pulled out one of the my old starrett uh micrometers and it came out to exactly on the money one millimeter or sorry 95.95 uh, and that is one of the shims listed in the Bentley manual. So this is exactly the shim I need. And it came out of the case that the old differential came out of. So coincidence? Who knows? So I'm going to go ahead and uh, install this. The Bentley manual's pretty explicit about which side to put this shim. And it says to put it on the transmission housing side, which I have laying over there on the Bentley manual. Uh, this side is the clutch side because that's where the clutch goes. So I'm going to go ahead and pound this thing in and I'm going to do, um, I'm going to see if it has a rotational torque. I, I don't have a torque wrench that will work for this, but I actually do have a little click wrench that I use for uh, bike stuff and it's, it goes up to like 5 newton meters. So I'll go ahead and see what happens with that. I'll go ahead and put that on the video and see if it works because it's a common torque wrench you could buy at a bike shop and they're not expensive. Next up is doing the turning torque on my differential and it's a little bit weird. Um, my, my measurement came out to it needing a 0.95 millimeter shim. Uh, I went ahead and installed a 0.85 millimeter because that was the closest one I had uh, without over, over tightening it. And I found my torque wrench it's not a dial style. Uh, it is a breakaway torque wrench, but it's made by CDI Torque Products, and it's a German company. Pretty sure it's made in China, but I got this at the bike shop. Uh, it goes up to, it, well, the range is 2 to 8 newton meters. And what we're looking for is 1.24 to 3.28 newton meters. So about 1 and a quarter to 3 and a quarter. Somewhere in there is a good turning torque. Um, this particular transmission does not use the spring-loaded axles, axle stubs, like, like these, you know. Uh, these are the later style O2A. These actually just sit in there. They don't, there's nothing holding them in. There's no center bolt to hold it in, which is okay, because they work. And it's got this weird little spring clip thing on it. But this is, this is like early style O2A. Uh, all O2Cs had these. So, because I didn't have anything in the center to turn with the torque wrench, I, I took a bike spoke, a stainless bike spoke, kind of looped it around, and centered it as best I could. It's fairly well centered in, in here. And then I put a, just a flat bit on here, and I'm using it to 
measure the turning torque. So it works. It's ghetto as shit. It's improvised, but it works. And so what I found, um, I came out to uh, 1.9. So the minimum was 1.24, so this thing's breaking away right around 1.9, and it's, it's really, it's not that easy to feel it. You kind of have to be real steady with it. I'm sure this is not the way to do it, but I get it turning with my hand and then try to keep it turning with this, and it breaks away at 1.9. If I bring it up to 2.0 and try it again, get it turning with your hand and then try to get it try to get it to turn with oh, look it broke away at two so it's, it's kind of it's moving just probably because my ghetto spring setup doesn't work very well so now I'm at 2.2 and that see I could barely get it turning without it breaking away right there so it's hovering between 2.2 and 1.9 newton meters which is perfect. That's exactly the range I was looking for. What more could you ask for? And I think I'm ready to finally assemble this whole thing. So that'll be the next video. Uh, all my clearances are done. Uh, good to go.